So today, Donna, she's going to talk about uh, one, one of her trips to heaven because she goes to heaven often. And uh, so we're going to listen to what she has to say and we'll comment as we go. Uh, they were up, you, the angels were on the roof. And yes. Just... Yes. This was, uh, I had a couple of encounters uh, that I went to heaven and saw my mansion in heaven. And on one specific occasion, I was walking along the beach because uh, the, the mansion's on the beach. Cool. It's on the ocean wow. in heaven. So uh, as I'm walking along with Jesus, I look ahead of me, and there's this mansion. And as I looked at it, I thought, oh, my goodness, that's my mansion. Because I had seen it before on a previous visit, but from the front. And uh, so I saw angels on the roof of the mansion, and they were hammering away, working. And uh, one of the angels yelled out, we need more materials. Send us more materials. All right, so in getting you up to speed, Donna is telling the tale of when she was on one of her many visits to heaven. She's next to the ocean walking up the beach with Jesus. Because, you know, it's it's the thing to do. Now, I'm not sure if this is one of those, you know, Jesus is my boyfriend and we take long walks on the beach type thing. But it kind of seems like it. And it just so happens, as luck would have it, that as she looks to the left, she she can see her mansion from the backside, apparently. And and look at that. Would you look at that? There's there's carpenter angels up there, and they're working on the roof, right? Because that's a thing. That's apparently what they do. R remember Emma Stark? She talked about eider angels. Well, these are carpenter angels, and they're hammering away. Looks like they're running out of materials. So that's where we are so far. The angels yelling out, we need more material. Wow. And that was the end of my visitation. And so I, I got along with the Lord, and I, I realized that uh, God was prompting me to start a prayer meeting, my husband and I, to start a prayer meeting at our home on Sunday nights to pray for the president, to pray for the nation. This was two years ago. And so we did it. We, we got it established, and every Sunday in the morning, we would go to our Sunday morning service, and then in the evening, we would have people come to our home, and we would spend a number of hours uh, worshiping and praying and interceding. So this went on, months went by, and I'm back on another visit to heaven. And this time, again, I'm walking down the beach, uh, and I see my the beautiful mansion, and one of the angels came over and said uh, to the Father, the Father was there, said to the Father, we have so much material. Would it be all right if we send some of the material down to the earth because we have more than what we need here wow. to finish the roof? And I knew when I was hearing this that it was really the Father's heart to want to send uh, the blessings to the earth, but he was letting the angel think it was his idea. And so uh, after that, uh, more and more blessings started coming into our lives. And all right, did you get that? You paying attention? Let me lay this out for you here. Donna is on her second trip to heaven, and she's walking down that same beach. It's a very popular beach. She likes to walk when she uh, goes to heaven. She likes to walk that beach, and she's coming up behind her mansion again. And uh, lo and behold, here comes that same angel. And you've really got to appreciate the timing of this because Donna was there right at the right time. When that angel came up to, yes, God the Father. God the Father was there. And why not? It was more than likely a beautiful sunny day. Surf was up. People out enjoying it. And the angel says, wow, now we have too much material. Can we send some of this to earth? So what Donna is selling you here is that after her first trip to heaven, or at least the previous trip to heaven, she uh, went back to earth and established a prayer group. And that apparently earned her enough to get those much-needed materials to finish her mansion. And uh, so that's what she's selling you. Now, if you don't believe me, listen to how this ends. What you did. And I'm like, wow. And, you know, there's another thing when, when she was talking about um, send more material. Do you know how you send material to build your mansion in heaven? By your giving to ministries and, you know, of course, we want you to give me uh, your giving here or give it to the Rigneys. It's all this all good ground. But I don't care. Give it wherever you give it. But get going on this and start you, your, your home. Send the material so the angels can begin to build your mansion in heaven. 
If you don't send anything, there's no mansion. If you don't send anything, there's no mansion. If you don't send anything, there's no mansion. All right, I hope you caught that. Uh, if not, you can listen back. Uh, the audio is not that great. It's on their end. They did not have a microphone near them. But this guy right here, as he took over, he literally stated that if you don't send him or the Rigneys your money, you're not going to have a home in heaven. Now, he did say, or you could send it somewhere else. But the implication is you're here watching their video, send the money in. Otherwise, you will not have a home in heaven. And Again, this is just so dastardly. It is just so terrible. I, I pity the listeners who fall for this. And it is absolutely wrong. And so we stand in opposition to this. May God have mercy upon them for, uh, for teaching anyone who would listen uh, this horrifying lie. All right, we're going to listen to a couple more clips from one more video from Donna Rigney because she's just that ridiculous. And uh, get ready because there's a couple of doozies coming here. So we'll comment as we go. Expectancy. And so that was the position I was in when he came to me and uh, said, do you have faith? And I said, yes. And immediately I was back in that garden. Now there's a garden swing there and the father and Jesus are on the garden swing and I'm sitting in between the two of them. And it's just wonderful. And the well, last year when he brought me there and I saw this beautiful garden and I was on the swing, there was a big gorilla behind the swing, pushing the swing. I thought an angel was pushing it. <laughs> the swing's going back and forth on its own. And so I looked to see and this big happy gorilla is there, smiling, so proud that it can push the Father in Jesus. Okay, now here, Donna, she's in heaven again. And she's describing being on a swing. And she's got Jesus on one side and the Father on the other side. While a smiling, happy gorilla is behind them, pushing them back and forth. Golly. But friends, now I've heard some things. This is like a bad 60s acid trip. Or like something you'd see from a Disney Fantasia like movie it's just a, you know before you get mad at me let me assure you donna did not and she does not go to heaven this is what i would coin as fantasy blasphemy and that's exactly what it is it's fantasy and it's blasphemy now consider the absolute lack of reverence for god here there is no fear there is no holiness there is no awe. There's no amazement. She's just hanging out on a swing in the garden with a gorilla doing, you know, what gorillas love to do. You know, push swings with, with God on the swing. That's what gorillas do, apparently. Now, these social media prophets and these storytellers have no reservations with blaspheming God at every chance they get. They portray Jesus or God as you know, just a couple of dudes chilling on the beach or maybe over in the garden sitting on the swing. It's sickening and it's done with more and more frequency in this time. It's atrocious. The alligator comes over, the alligator, Jesus opens the alligator's mouth, looks, puts his head in. He was like a kid. Jesus was like a kid. Honestly, what, what do you say to this? It's so shocking. To watch these hucksters degrade our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and turn him basically into a carnival worker. Or, you know, somebody who works at the circus. Step right up, folks, and watch the Savior of the world stick his head in a live alligator's mouth. It's just, oh, it's, I can't even. And the, and the way she described, you know, Jesus, he's just like a kid. He's so fun. Watch, oh, he's so silly, he's putting his head in an alligator's mouth. I, I can't. It's, it's too much. It's so blasphemous. It's so degrading.